definitely not total comfort zone. Um, I made a lot of mistakes. You know, I was very, uh, wasn't patient, didn't really stick to the game plan like I should have. Um, but, you know, I think that that's probably the most alive I've felt since 2016, and that's the most uh, Kayla I've felt in a long, long time. So it was absolutely worth it. I can't wait to get back in there and do it again, and uh, I can't wait to go train. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people would, would love to say they made a bunch of mistakes in their first fight and got to finish, you know, in around three minutes or so. Yeah. No, I mean, obviously, yeah, no, I mean, obviously, um, my judo and my instincts from years of doing the same thing over and over and over again took over. But, you know, I don't want to just be a judo player who gets in a cage. I want to be the best MMA fighter in the world. So I have a lot to work on. I already told my boxing coach we're working every day. That's it. I don't care. If he's got plans, <laughs> forget about them. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm, you know, just grateful to my team and everyone who supports me along the way. It's been quite a ride, and I'm just glad it's over. <laughs> so they were they were just saying that they, you know, they need to figure out exactly when when is the best time to get you back in the cage and fighting again. Yeah. When are you thinking? When are you aiming for? Yeah, the sooner the better. I think um, it's in my contract to fight every four months, so I mean maybe October. Yeah. Um, but I'm ready. You know, I. I don't have time to mess around. I want to get in there. I think the more I fight, the more experience I get, the more comfortable I'm going to get inside that cage. You, you're striking. You look very comfortable, and in, in, your striking looks fantastic. We're <laughs> I don't know what fight you were watching. <laughs> what? I look like a zombie. <laughs> Let me grab you. Well, I was going to ask what you thought of it. So no. No, I'm not. I was not impressed with my striking. Um, it's definitely, you know, obviously being a grappler, being a judo player, it's always going to be something that I struggle with, but I feel like there's so much room for improvement, you know. This is just the beginning of my career, and my coaches keep calling me an embryo. It's true, I'm an embryo, you know, I'm, I'm a baby in this thing. And um, 10,000 hours of throwing jabs, I think, will do the trick and teach me not to walk like this. <laughs> what did uh, Big Jim have to say about it? It was really funny, actually, because... When I threw her, where we landed, we were right in front of my corner. And that doesn't really happen in judo. Like, they're always quite a distance away, and they can't talk to you when the action is happening. So, like, Mike's right here, and then I've got, like, Mike on this shoulder, and Big Jim on this shoulder. And, you know, Mike is like, stay on top, stay on top, that's it, good, keep control. All right, hit her, good. Like, you know, walking me through it, you know, relax, relax, stay calm. All right, hit her, big hits, big hits. And then I can hear Big Jim like, Juji, Juji, like the arm, the arm bar. He's like, it's there, it's there. So it's like one, one coach is like, okay, there it is, like, take it. And the other coach is like, no, stay on top, maintain position. So I was like, what do I do? <laughs> but it worked out that I just did both. <laughs> is, uh, is 45 the next one for you for sure? Or, or um, I'd like to. I think I'm going to talk to my manager, Ali, and talk to my coaches. Um, you know, I woke up. Uh, yesterday morning I was like 157 I ate and drank a gallon of water the day before and I was fine I took a bath for 15 minutes and I was 155 so um, you know I think maybe the next one is 150 or even it's time to go down to 145 and, and get serious you know because I need to get used to that it's a big change for me I went from eating 6,000 calories a day to now my boyfriend's like a food Nazi you know so uh, <laughs> Not looking forward to a 145, but if you want to be the best, you got to make sacrifices. Now, is that really in the in the play of trying to get more women to be able to face you to try to go to 145, or is that just something you um, want to just try for in the long run? No, I think it's just um, you know my goal. Like from the beginning, I've said I want to be the best in the world at this, and the best woman in the world at 145. So that's where I got to go. Did it make it a little bit? I was just, you know, I was just happy to get a win. In my head, like, I was visualizing, like, head kicks and, like, knockouts. Like, I was, every night I would visualize a different way to win, and then I went and did the same thing I always do. So I guess it was nice, but I told you, I don't want to be a judo player in a cage. I want to be the world's best MMA fighter. What kind of time frame do you see do you, getting to someone like Cyborg? Do, do you have a time frame in mind? No. Um... You know, uh, like I said, I'm an embryo. Um, I know she's already taken notice of me because she's been sending me some tweets. So, uh, you know, that's 
cool of her to call out a zero and zero fighter. But <laughs> one and zero. Oh. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, thank there. you very much. Yeah, thank you. you. One and zero. Oh. Um, but I have no timeline. You know, I just want to get better every single day, and I think my coaches and my team will know when I'm ready for that kind of challenge. Any other questions? Uh, look, you mentioned that you felt like you're an embryo. Your coaches said you're an embryo. Yeah. Well, is that the fact that you have no prior skills or training in MMA and the fact that you don't have any bad traits or bad habits either that they can develop and mold you? Yeah, I think that's one thing, um, you know, they were like, you know, you're a diamond in the rough, but you're a diamond. You know, you have a great skill set to, to fall back on, but you don't have any bad habits from any other sports for sure, for, from any other skill sets for sure. But at the, at the end of the day, like, I just, I have no experience. Like, even, you know, we're walking out to the weigh-ins and I'm asking Mike, like, what do I do with my hands? Like, <laughs> do I bow, do I shake her hand? Like, what do I do? And he's like, whatever feels comfortable. You know, maybe just make a joke of it or maybe you take it seriously, like, it's okay. And then when they're wrapping my hands, he's like, you know, do you want it more padded or less padded? And I'm like, I don't know, like, <laughs> whatever you say. So I'm, I'm, I'm a beginner, you know, and I'm experiencing all of this for, for the first time through, um, you know, new eyes, and I'm just enjoying the journey and loving every second of it. Where would be the ideal place that you would, would like to take a fight? Anywhere that you'd like to be? Anywhere that, I, where yeah. would be an ideal place to yeah. fight? Like where do you um, think well, I'm from the Midwest originally. I grew up in Ohio, so there were a lot of people here from my hometown. They like rented a bus or something cool. from Middletown and drove over. So this is awesome to fight here. Uh, you know, I lived in Boston since I was 16, so I would love to fight in Boston. I think um, that would be an amazing feeling. And then, I mean, I've fought all over the world, so it doesn't. Just put me in the cage. Put me in, coach. <laughs> all right, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kim. I don't know what to do with my hands, so I'll bow. <laughs>